Hi, it's V with Crafting Daily Dose, and today I have a card for you that uses the Awesome Otter stamp set from Celebration. On the inside of the card is a cute little guy saying hello, and on the front, this is a pendulum card. So we have a happy otter floating around holding onto his fish. Now this card also uses the layering diorama dies and you can check the description box for information about a course that I have coming up that's going to give you even more ideas for these dies. Right now I'm excited to show you how to make this card. These are the pieces for the card. My cardstock color is balmy blue and I've got my card base that is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches scored down the middle at four and one quarter inches. Then I've got three more panels of that balmy blue cardstock. Each one is five and a half inches by four and one quarter inches. Now I'm going to be using the layering diorama dies to cut into these, but I'm going to do some ink blending before I cut. So I'm starting out with the whole piece. I did go ahead and use the dies to cut out a piece of basic white cardstock. This is the second largest of the dies, and this is going to give me a message panel for the inside of the card. I also have a scrap of basic white cardstock. The exact size doesn't matter. It just needs to be big enough to fit the otter that I'm going to stamp onto it. It's going to be this one, so just make sure that your cardstock fits this size. I'll also need some of that basic white cardstock for my sentiment. Now these here are going to be for my mechanism. I've got a strip of balmy blue cardstock. It's three eighths of an inch across by two and a half inches high. The exact height doesn't really matter because we're gonna end up trimming this down anyway. I need a penny to act as the weight for my pendulum and I'm going to be securing it in place with some tape. I'm using clear tape, but it's not really gonna be seen, so you can use a different type of tape if you prefer. And then I've got this little circle die here. Now this one comes from the gumball machine dies and it is three eighths of an inch across. Any sort of small circle die could work here or you might have a punch instead. Now if you don't have one of those, you can create your own hole, but it is going to work more smoothly if you have either a die or a punch to work with. I'm going to do some ink blending using balmy blue ink. And then I'll use my stamping spritzer to create some water effects. Now I plan to color in my otters using Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol-based markers. So I'll be stamping the outline image in Memento Tuxedo Black. Now if you are going to be using water-based ink, like the Stampin' Write markers or using ink directly from your ink pad, then you'll want to stamp in Stays On Ink instead because that one is waterproof. For my otter, I'm going to be coloring with the blends in ivory, dark crumb cake, and bronze. Other colors would work too. These just happen to be the ones that I have in my collection. I'll also be using light calypso coral, light balmy blue, and dark gray granite. For the adhesives, I'm using multi-purpose glue and foam adhesive sheets. Now, you can use dimensionals. They're the same thickness, and so they are interchangeable in some ways, but I prefer to use the adhesive sheets for this project. I'm also going to be using just one of the mini glue dots to adhere my penny onto the pendulum so that it can act as a weight, but that's optional. And I also mentioned before that I'm using a little bit of just regular clear tape as well. For embellishment, I'm going to be using some of the clear polished dots, and I think we're ready to get started. I'm going to start with the ink blending here, and this one is going to be the bottom of the three layers on the front of the card. This one is going to be the darkest, so it's going to get the most ink. I'm going to focus the color here mostly in the middle and a little bit towards the top. Now for the second piece, I'm going to be cutting out a lot from the middle of it, so I don't need to really put too much color there. I'm basically creating sort of a halo of color around the middle. 
Now you might be wondering why I don't go ahead and cut out the holes before I do this ink blending. And the reason is because even when I try to be very careful about it, if I cut the hole first, I find that a lot of ink gets trapped right around the edges and it makes the edges darker, which I don't necessarily want. So this works for me. Now I may end up having to add some additional ink after it's been cut, but at least those edges won't be overly dark. Now on this last one, I'm concentrating on the outside edges. I don't need a lot of color here, just enough so that there's a little bit of variation and it doesn't look so flat. These are the layering diorama dies. There are seven of them, and you might notice that the largest three are basically the same shape, just a different size, and they nest inside one another. Then we switch to a different shape for the next set of two, and then finally a third shape for the last two. Now for something like the water that our otter is going to be swimming in, I want to select two different shapes because I think that makes it more interesting than if we have something following exactly and it just forms sort of like a rim. So I'm going to be using number three and number five. The third largest die is what I'm going to be using for this outer piece. And the fifth largest die is what I'll be using for this middle piece. I'll go ahead and get these cut out and I'll show you what it looks like. Here are my three pieces layered together. I can check and see if I need any more ink in areas. So maybe add some more out here in this bottom layer, maybe a little bit over here, and then just a little bit on this top layer. I love blending with the same color ink as the cardstock. It adds a lot of depth to the color, but you know that it's always gonna match perfectly. Once I'm happy with the amount of color, I'll spritz it with some water to get some droplets. And give it a little bit of time for the color change to finish developing and for the paper to thoroughly dry. If you want smaller droplets, then spritz further from the paper. And if you want them to be larger, then spray closer to the paper. I'm going to stamp out one of the little otters onto the message panel that goes on the inside of the card. And here I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink, again, because I'm coloring with the blends. I'll start by coloring the darker parts of the body with my bronze marker. I'll do an outline with dark crumb cake and then blend it in with ivory. Add a little bit of dark gray granite for the nose and then fill in some balmy blue for the water. Now I'll stamp the otter for the front of the card as well as my sentiment. And I'm going to color this otter pretty much the same way. and that fish is going to be in light calypso coral. Now I'll trim down that sentiment and I'm also going to fussy cut out the otter and I'll just ignore those lines that represent the water around him.
We're ready to assemble. I'm going to start by gluing these three layers together. Now the otter is going to go into this space. Now notice that I've positioned him a little bit higher than the midpoint. There's more space down here than there is up there. And that's good because the higher that you can get him, the longer the pendulum can be so that he can swing around better. So the midpoint of his body is right around here. And that's where I'm going to place my die so that I can create a hole here. I'm going to place a little bit of washi tape to keep that in place, and then I'll go ahead and cut that out. So here's my piece with that hole cut out. Now I'm gonna take that same die and I'm going to cut some foam adhesive sheet. Actually, this is two layers of foam adhesive sheet that are stuck together. I oftentimes use it double, so I already have this ready to go. The die is gonna go right on top of that and it's gonna cut it very nicely. So here's what it looks like. It cut beautifully and it's going to fit right into the hole that we created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one end onto the back of my otter. So I'm placing it about the middle of his body and then it's going to go in like this and I can check and make sure that it swings freely. Now I'm gonna turn it over and I'm going to attach that little tab that we had cut out earlier to the other side of this. Peeling off the backing here and I will stick the tab on. Now I wanna check and see that it doesn't hang too low and it seems like it's okay. If you placed your otter lower, then you might have to trim off a little bit from the end here. Now, if you don't have a die, you might be able to use a punch, even a regular paper punch like you might have in your home office. If you don't have that, then look for something sharp like maybe a thumbtack or the pointy end of your take a pick tool. And you're going to create a hole. I'm going to pierce it onto this little piece of foam here. And then what you'll do is you're going to insert your tool into that hole to make it as big as you can with that. After you get it started, you can bring in your snips. So now you're going to be twisting your snips around and then keep going. Then you'll want to come back and trim off some of this excess here. And just keep working at that until you can get that hole as smooth as you can make it. Now to fit inside of the hole, you can use your dimensionals. Remember that you're going to stack two of them together and then you're going to have a better result if you trim it down so that it's more circular and less of a hexagon. So just trim off those corners a little bit. These cut really easily. Or again, if you have a paper punch, you can use that as well. 
You can work on making the hole bigger or the dimensional smaller so that it will fit inside the hole. And remember, you want two of these stacked together. Now, this is not going to be as smooth as if you use a die or a punch, but it can still work. Here's my penny. I'm going to go ahead and attach it with a glue dot. I'm just pressing it onto the glue dot and then I'll peel it off. The glue dot will come along with it. And I'm going to place this at the bottom of my pendulum mechanism. Okay, now I'm going to turn the card over, and it's always good to check these things. So I'm checking to make sure that the otter is moving smoothly so far. That looks good. Now I'll turn it back over. Next, I'm going to wrap this up with tape. In part, this is to help it be more secure, but also the tape is going to help it glide more smoothly against the paper. Now, instead of a penny, you can also use a washer. That's going to be a little bit thinner. Let me turn it over and test it again. That looks good. Now I just need to mount this onto my card base. I've got some more of those foam adhesive sheets. I've stacked it into two layers again and I've cut it into strips. I'm going to use these strips to place it around the top and the sides of this piece so that I can mount it onto the card. Now I want to be careful not to put any down here because if I put some foam here, this pendulum won't be able to swing anymore and then our mechanism won't work. I want to check from the other side. My pendulum is going to stop here, but that's going to still give plenty of movement to the otter. Now that the foam is in place, we're going to check the motion from the other side. So if I swing all the way over here, this foam stops the pendulum from moving, and let's check and see where the otter is. He's positioned like this, which I think I like. If I go in the other direction though, the pendulum doesn't stop until it's all the way over here, and then my otter is almost upside down, and I don't want him to move quite that far. I think I only want him to be able to move to like here. So I go back to the other side, this is where the pendulum would be for the otter to be in the position that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more foam here to act as a stopper. I've got a little scrap here. It's also double layered. I'll go ahead and put it here. And then let's check one more time. Oops, I got it trapped. There we go. So it goes like this, and then it gets stopped here, and this is where the otter ends up. So I'm happy with that. I'll go ahead and put this on my card base now. I'm peeling off some of the backing, and then I'm going to line things up. Once I'm happy with the placement, then I'll go ahead and peel the rest of the backing off. Let's go ahead and finish assembling. 
I've trimmed down my sentiment and I'll go ahead and glue it on. And now for the inside. I'm just going to add in a few of those polished dots. So here's our finished card. There's a cute little otter on the inside, and of course the pendulum for the front. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this dose of creativity. If you like this project, don't forget to check the description box for more information about the Layering Dioramas course. And if you try this project, tag me or share it in my Facebook group. I look forward to seeing you the next time, and until then, have a great day!